Hey guys, I'm Latana, and on this channel, we discuss all things t-shirt. Today, I'm here to discuss with you what type of t-shirt is best, t-shirt business is going to be best for you. And only you can answer that question, but there are a few things that I can help you with as far as telling you the types of equipment that you're going to need for t-shirt businesses and depending on what you want to print and your customer base that will tell you what type of equipment that you're going to need so the first thing that you need to figure out when you say that you want to start a t-shirt business is who is your customer going to be who is your customer and what income bracket is your customer in it's always about the money, y'all, okay? Um, what type of t-shirts do your will your customers wear? Uh, will you be printing t-shirts for the general public where you're printing t-shirts in bulk? Or will you be printing t-shirts to sell in your store? So what price point do you want to sell your t-shirts at? So all of that stuff you've got to kind of think about your brand and what it is that you want and then once you kind of know that then you can decide which of these methods that I'm going to present to you is going to be the best method for you and you also have to just figure out you know as far as your money wise what's going to be the best method for you. So the first thing I'm going to talk to you guys about is regular heat transfers for like inkjet printers and laser laser printers okay so you can go and buy a Epson printer okay with stock Epson inks get a you, you just need a computer and you can even do it with an iron okay but you're not going to get a professional output most people that have the ink trans run ink transfer businesses, inkjet transfer businesses, or laser jet, and they do stuff like that. That's for like if you're doing, you know how you see the photo tees. So a lot of those people do that stuff. I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons. The pros of doing inkjet transfers is that you can get into the business really quick and easy doing them. Um, you only need a basic stock printer from the store, a graphic design program, and you don't even really have to have that with all of the apps and stuff that they have out today. But you need a printer, you would need a computer, and you know, some type of design software, and purchase inkjet transfers, print it on your printer, and then heat apply it onto the shirt. Very easy, right? Okay. So that's that's a very quick and easy way to get in. So why don't more people do it? Inkjet transfers are great when you're doing like things for one ofs. You're doing if you've got a shop to where in your shop people come in for custom t-shirts and they're only going to wear that shirt a few times, okay? Because once they wear that shirt a bunch of times and start washing it, you're going to have start having problems. You'll get the fading, you'll get the peeling, you'll get the cracking. Now, you can buy the Jet Pro Soft transfers and a nice good shirt that has a tight weave and your transfers will last almost forever. If you use an Epson printer and you use the 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 highest uh, Epson photo printer, the inks in that printer is a little bit different than other inks. The problems that you'll have is that once you decide that you want to print on something other than white shirts, inkjet transfers, they have this polymer. And that polymer will transfer onto the shirt, so the shirt will be kind of hard and kind of crackly feeling, right? Then you go into getting, you get a customer who wants to get a shirt and they want a black shirt, but you've got to put this big, ugly white square around it. So that leaves you kind of up a creek okay so 
inkjet transfers, if you want to do it, you would do it pretty much as an add-in, but not as just that, just being your total business that you do. You know, it might be something that you do for you have customers that come in and they just need to wear something really quick, one time, and they're in and they're out. But I definitely would not recommend to you guys to start your business just based on just doing inkjet transfers, okay? Another option, sorry guys, I've got hair in my face. I'm trying to fix it. Okay, so the next option that I have for you guys is going to be vinyl. So heat transfer vinyl, you can get some really, really good heat transfer vinyl out there and you can get some really crappy heat transfer vinyl too. In order for you to start a heat transfer vinyl shirt, the only thing you need is a cutter, which is a plotter, also referred to as a cutter. So it can be, and you've got different cutters. You've got some that print and cut, which is really cool, like the Silhouette. Um, you've got the Graph Tech. You've got all type of professional cutters out there, but on a small level, um, just as like crafting and stuff like that, you've got Cricut and then you've got Silhouette. Now both of those will work when you're doing just little bitty stuff right when you're getting just to get you started but if you want to get into doing something on a big le level you may want to get a rolling cut and print something like that the so a entry a entry vinyl cutter without an optical eye will run you probably four or five hundred bucks um a silhouette or a cricket will run you a few hundred bucks and then you get into the thousands when you go into getting into the big wide format and the professional cutters. Okay, although Silhouette is supposed to be dropping a 20 inch cameo really soon with an optical eye that now has a servo blade. I'll do a review on that as soon as it comes out, but until then, we don't know what's going on with it, okay? Okay, so. In order to do to do heat transfer vinyl, you'll need heat transfer vinyl, okay? So you would just do your design in a design program and it, it would cut out the vinyl. Quick, easy way to get into printing and it's affordable. It works well in combination with heat transfers and vinyl, especially if you have a cutter that has an optical eye, then you could do a cut and print and you could print around that. You could cut around that big, ugly white block that I'm telling you about, okay? Now, again, you would have things. I don't, let's see if I have one. I'm gonna show you. I think I do have one here on the floor. So this is what I'm talking about. With the heat transfer so with this heat transfer you see you feel it you feel it you hear it so it will crack and all that stuff okay so this is something that i sell for rest in peace shirts because people don't really wear these they get them they wear them at the funeral or for a anniversary or something like that and then they put these up so they're not wearing this all the time but you can expect with something like this you can expect about 20 washes okay now with let's go back from into the heat transfer vinyl sorry guys my brain i will just jump all over the place so with the heat transfer vinyl it comes in a row and come in a row like this and then you'll use a cutter and cut out whatever lettering that you want it's a quick and easy way to get started the downside to that is that you have to weed vinyl and when you do like little small designs then that becomes a headache okay um and you have to layer colors but if you're doing it for one or two shirts it's a great way to get something done with vinyl work one thing that i do is i limit i make it easy for me and i limit the number of fonts the type of font that the customer can have and i limit the size of the font so if i know that my cutter will not cut below a half an inch really good or design or 
I don't want to cut uh, like a Times Roman font. Then, you know, it has, has points on the end of it. Things like that. Let me decline that, guys. Things like that. Then I just will not do that order or I will just tell the customer, you know, we need to get another fund. So that type of stuff is really cool. Um, if you're doing, you know, I'd say no more than 30 shirts at a time with something like that. And 30 is a lot. It's a lot to uh, pushing it. But if you're doing athletic stuff like team stuff, team jerseys, things like that, then definitely transfer vinyl is the way to go and some of the best transfer vinyl in the world comes from heat transfer warehouse and i can say that because i've used that vinyl for over 20 years okay so moving down along before sizer and all of them was even thought of honey there was heat train there was the fine warehouse okay there was that good old endoratex so let's mark that one off my list let's see here I got to stay focused, okay? So we've talked about the heat transfer and we have talked about vinyl. Okay. Sorry, guys. I didn't even have vinyl wrote down on here. I just went into vinyl and didn't even have it wrote down. Okay. So then there is sublimation printing, which I love. You can start a whole business doing sublimation you can sublimate on t-shirts you can sublimate on cups you can sublimate on plaques you can sublimate on glass stuff on wood stuff just everything you can just sublimate 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 but whatever you sublimate on it has to have polyester okay it has to have a poly content or a polyester so for sublimation the inks are transparent and we can't print on black shirts. You can, but you can't do direct sublimation onto black shirts. Go look at some of my videos for that or Google somebody else's videos and you'll see. Anyway, I think I've got a sublimation video on printing black shirts. Sublimation is really, really cool. You can start a whole business with sublimation. You'd want to use at least a 50% cotton, 50% polyester shirt. I've had really, really great results with that, especially in this days. Everybody likes a vintage shirt. So if the shirt fades just a little bit, customers aren't really going to just care too much. But if you are in like the sports apparel business and you're doing the dry fit and stuff like that, oh, you can make a killing on sublimation, honey. Just a killing, okay? That's what this great big printer over here is for, is to make a killing on sublimation. So keep that sublimation printing in mind. Now, you can get an affordable sublimation printer. You can buy one, a Epson Echo Tank printer or other printer and just... Um, convert it over. Really with the Epson Echo Tanks, you don't have to convert anything over. You're just going to not put the Epson ink in and put sublimation ink in it and you're done. Okay. So you can get into that with the Echo Tank printers. I think they're a few hundred bucks right now. You can get into a large format printer in the 44 inches will range probably about five, six grand. If you're not doing a lot of sublimation, then you could just go for something small. Keep in mind when you're doing sublimation, if you're only getting an eight and a half by 11 inch print sublimation printer, then you'll only be able to sublimate a design this size or this size. This is pretty much perfect. I'm a big girl, so this covers my whole chest. A lot of times people always say, oh, it's too small. Yeah, if you've got a really huge design that's going to go all the way down there into your kudaku, then yeah, it's going to be too big. You can turn it this way, and then you could go right here. It's normally standard size print is about 10 inches, so mainly on sublimation, you'd only probably go about this big anyways. And if you're doing corporate stuff or sports apparel, logos are only going to be yay so big okay you could also take the paper and cut and kind of paste it together kind of you know type it together all that kind of stuff but that's a whole nother video okay the other thing that you could do with sublimation is you can print on 
cups and other things like that so even if you did get a small sublimation printer you'd be good so what you would need for sublimation is you would need your printer you would need your computer with some type of design program on it and you would need either a cup press to sublimate in or a convection oven now i have both the convection oven way i think i can get in about six at a time on the cut press, it's a lot faster than the convection oven, even though I can get in more at a time. The convection oven takes longer. You've got to buy mug wraps and all of that type of stuff. But with the press, you can only press one at a time, but you can do about three. It takes about three minutes to do one cup. So that gives you kind of an idea. If you're doing, you know, little custom stuffs for people, then that's great. Okay, so sublimation is a good one that you can get started in sublimation probably with a purchasing everything new you're going to get that less than a thousand dollars some of you are really really creative at getting your hands a hold of deals and you'll probably get it for four or five hundred bucks who knows okay so sublimation is one thing that is a great way to start a t-shirt business and it's really good if you want to customize on a lot of different things another way of getting into printing would be DTG printing. You can buy a big printer where you just put a t-shirt in there and print on it. The thing with that is, is that sometimes you get fading with that. You have to do uh, treatments where you have to spray down the shirts with this treatment and all of that stuff. There are videos out there that tell you about DTG printing. You go in and to get a DTG machine, I'd say you're in the 10G plus range on just getting the machine, but you don't need anything else. Well, you do, you need a heat press, okay? So then you gotta turn around and get your heat press, but you can get your printing directly to the garment, okay? Um, customers like that. You got to take into account that with a DTG machine, you can only print so many prints a day on it, okay? So I would recommend a DTG machine to people who are doing small orders. Okay, let's go into the embroidery. You can also, you may want to start an embroidery business. If you want to start an a t-shirt business where you're just doing embroidery, you want to go into getting an embroidery machine. Now they have the embroidery machines at Walmart where you can do one ofs and things like that, which is really small for small stuff, but you wouldn't be able to do caps and things like that. Multiple colors would be a headache, all of that stuff. So you'd go in and you'd get your big embroidery machine. That's going to cost you in the few thousands. Okay. Um, embroidery, you're normally limited to a certain size on the hoop I believe um, you've got embroidery machines that do caps and some that don't do caps so go in look and see if embroidery is the right thing for you most people don't embroider on t-shirts sometimes you'll get a t-shirt that's gonna just have you know an embroidered logo but really for embroidery that's kept done with polos dress shirts things like that so with embroidery it's a little bit more expensive maybe you'll make a lot of money but remember that you're only doing one or two at a time okay now that leaves me to my favorite and my choice of screen printing, my choice of printing, which is screen printing. That's what I do. I am a screen printer. Screen printing is going to be not the most expensive way to get into printing and not the cheapest way to get into printing, but screen printing uh, is going to require more pieces to the puzzle to make everything work because with screen printing you need a printing press you're going to print each color individually so you're going to need different screens you're going to need a flash dryer you're going to need a conveyor dryer to dry the shirts some people get away with just using a flash dryer to start out and you're going to need a lot of products, okay? You're gonna need inks, you're gonna need cleanup products, you're gonna need a lot of chemicals, chemicals. So if you are one of those pritzy type people and you don't like to get dirty, then screen print might not be for you. But if you like to make money and you wanna be able to do shirts in bulk like me, and then 
screen printing may be for you. Screen printing is going to be very technical. This video is already at the 20 minute mark. So if you are with me, I'm going to hurry up and wrap this thing up, okay? Because I'm tired. Let me take a drink of this here. Wine, okay? Give me one second. Okay, so if you want to do a lot of shirts, you want to get into screen printing, okay? If you want to do bulk shirts, if you want to do a bunch of stuff and you want to print on different items, sublimation may be the way to go. If you're just wanting to play around at the house and do stuff, you know, for the kids and things like that, birthdays, family reunions, not nah, really family reunions, not family reunions. Don't, nobody wants a family reunion shirt that they can't wear more than a couple of times, so not family reunions, but inkjet transfers are pretty good. Laser is terrible in my opinion but i haven't used a laser transfer 